continue to believe a deal uh, is possible. Getting a deal done is of vital importance for so many reasons that I've spent much of this week talking about, whether it be bringing hostages home, whether it's getting an influx of humanitarian aid, uh, being able to uh, partake in diplomacy to get this cycle, this region out of endless cycles of violence. So, so for all those reasons and more, this is incredibly important and we'll remain focused on that. One more, sorry, uh, the Supreme Leader of Iran uh, put out a tweet essentially saying it is our duty to take revenge. What does the United States know about possible retaliatory steps taken by Iran or its press? So I'm just not going to speculate on what the uh, Supreme Leader may or may not be referring to and don't want to speculate on the actions that the Iranian regime uh, may or may not take. Uh, we are continuing to urge restraint to all parties to avoid an escalation into a wider regional conflict. Uh, and as the Secretary uh, uh, said in Singapore, the United States uh, was not involved in the attack in Tehran, but uh, the United States, of course, will take um, every possible measure to uh, appropriately and uh, uh, accurately uh, protect our personnel, our interests um, uh, in the region and beyond uh, should we need to. What about those of the Israelis? Is there a commitment to come to Israel's defense? So, later on? Uh, you've heard me say this a number of times this week, our, our commitment to uh, Israel's security and defending them from uh, uh, malign attacks like those from uh, reckless regimes like the uh, Iranian regime, that is unwavering and ironclad and that continues uh, to be the case. Israel is of course a country that faces a, a number of threats uh, uh, purely based on just where they are in the world. And so that uh, our, our security relationship with them is unwavering, our commitment to them is unwavering. But again, I'm not going to speculate on um, any actions that may or may not happen. Thank you. I have one more on Russia. We'll come back. Yeah. yeah. Go ahead. Said, uh, it's a simple question. Does Iran, as a sovereign nation, as any other nation, does it have the right to defend itself. Iran is a regime that uh, time and time again uh, since 1979 has, one, been the largest and greatest exporter of terrorism, not just in the uh, Middle East, but broadly. And it has a clear track record of not just suppressing uh, its own people, but also uh, okay. funding, promoting, encouraging um, uh, malign, destabilizing actions okay. uh, across the region. Uh, okay. And our opinion and point of view on the uh, uh, Iranian regime is quite clear, and we will not hesitate mm -hmm. to uh, not just stand with our allies and partners when it mm -hmm. comes to defending against threats from Iran, but also taking appropriate action from the United States okay, um, so, as, it, uh, so, as it stands. So you're saying that the nature of the... Yeah, so, go so ahead, you, Daphne. You said that you've seen Israel engage in constructive conversations about a ceasefire deal. Is it still your assessment today that they're engaging constructively? That is still our assessment. I'm not going to speak to uh, specific negotiation processes, but that continues to be uh, our our assessment. Go ahead. So, we continue to believe a we continue to believe a deal is uh, achievable and urgent, and we are continuing to work and are committed to work um, to to narrow those gaps and to make a deal possible. We think it's vital and vitally interest to the region. And is it even if the even if aside for a, a second, really, we take the safety of all our personnel, not just state. Department personnel, but any personnel, American personnel, uh, incredibly seriously. We take the safety of our um, embassies and our facilities and our installations incredibly seriously. And constantly around the clock, we are always assessing circumstances on the ground. We are assessing uh, what risk uh, levels are, what threat levels are, and appropriately, uh, we will make adjustments uh, on those as we need to. We certainly aren't going to read out that operational process from here. That would kind of be counterproductive. But what I can say is that this is not just tantamount of importance to the Secretary of State. I know it is also of importance to not just the President, but the Secretary of Defense and other um, executives across this um, interagency who may or may not have personnel abroad. So this is something that we are paying very close attention to. All right. Thanks, everybody. Also informed about Ismail Hania's death. Ismail Hania was involved 
in my cousin's kidnap. But I don't act out of revenge. I act out of hope and out of wishing for life, the life and security of our people. And every person around this world, I think that dealing with a terror organization is something that is wrong for both sides. And I understand that, you know, Ismail Anya is, has some responsibility for what is going on. What I wish for right now is the release of our hostages, the 115 people, among them my cousin, who need to come back home. I know that Carmel and the people around her have done nothing wrong and they deserve to come home. And I know that the way to bring back all of these people is a deal. A deal must be signed. I don't know how this news affects the deal, but I wish, I really wish for all of the forces around the world that will gather in order to bring our people back home. I hope our politicians will know to make this news into the release of the hostages. I really don't even know what to make of this. Look, we're obviously living in a very tense region. 115 hostages have been held for 299 days. Tomorrow is day 300. Um, but the region is suffering. Everybody in this region is, in a way, being held hostage to misguided leaders who want to take the region in a direction that is not a positive direction. Hopefully, those leaders who have a clearer, more hopeful, more optimistic sense of where this region could go, where it was going over the few years leading up to October 7th, will be the ones who went out, the voices who went out, and we can bring calm and a brighter future to everybody in the region. Every other Israeli was completely shattered by the death of 12 innocent kids by an attack by Hezbollah. Obviously, we have to make sure that they know this is not something we can let pass by. And still, every such occurrence and every such attack is a threat to the hostage deal that is right now being negotiated. And this is why I am even more anxious about the fact that we need to seal this deal as soon as possible in order to bring all the hostages back home before anything else happens that creates a, a, a war between us and Hezbollah or a greater war in the region. I feel a little bit stressed because I don't know what is going to happen as, as a result of it. I do understand that Israel needs to respond to what has happened in the north, uh, but at the same time I'm not sure that if we continue the circle of, 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 hay, of, of war, it, it will end the, the, the situation, the conflict. I, I really hope that the Israelis and, and, uh, and the other side will reach an agreement because uh, we, we lose a lot of, a lot of life. and. Uh, I'm very, very scared because I know at the same time that there are a lot of people in the, in the north that uh, are living as refugees in their own country now, and it's difficult to continue like that.
I think the Israel attack in Beirut was was necessary. We we needed to do that. We don't want to attack. We we wish we could, we wish we had the opportunity to don't do this. But after 12 children murdered in uh, Migdal Shams and Migdal Shams and a lot of kids, citizens, army soldiers, so got killed in this awful war we have not we have not under the opportunity but to attack we don't like that we attack our people we are humans but we need to protect ourselves we got no other option